Well, welcome back, and we've actually got a new topic for you tonight on advanced factoring. Now, this is not something we've done before, um, so again, expect a quiz on it uh, tomorrow when we get to class. So here's the deal. Let's go ahead and get this in our notebook. We are going to do factoring with something called U-substitution. You'll be given a polynomial in the form of a factorable quadratic, AU squared plus BU plus C, where U can be any function of X. You may also be asked to factor such an expression or to solve an equation for x. So here are the steps. And again, feel free to pause it when you need to. Uh, determine the function of x and set u equal to that function. Substitute u into the equation. Factor using u as the variable. Substitute the given function of x back in. And factor again if possible or solve. So let's take a look at our first example. Okay, it says factor completely. Now one thing some of us are a little sloppy at is factor versus solve. Notice it does not say solve for x, so your answer should not say x equals. You are simply factoring. Now I want you to underline that word completely. That usually implies that there are several steps. Okay, make sure it can't get factored any further. So here we go. Um, now, because this doesn't look like my normal, x squared plus ax squared plus bx plus c, I notice I need a u substitution. I have some quantity I'm squaring in place of my x. So here's how we tackle this. We're going to say, okay, let u equal 4x squared plus 5x. Okay. So that was step one. Determine the function x and set u equal to that function. Now substitute u into the equation. So I'm going to say this is really u squared minus 5u minus 6. Okay, do you see what I did? I said I'm going to call this u, so I'm going to call this u squared minus 5 times u minus 6. Now, this should be really friendly. Factor this equation using u as the variable. Well, that's easy. Okay, so I'm saying ma'am, multiply, add, multiply. So I know my options are 6 and 1 or 2 and 3. And notice it's negative, which means my signs have to be different. So the only way to get a negative 5, well, those could both be negative, but that's not different signs. 6 would have to be negative, and the 1 would have to be positive. So I'm going to say this is u minus 6 and u plus 1. So I factored using the u. Now it says substitute the given function of x back in for u. So now I'm going to take whatever my u was and substitute it back in. So 4x squared plus 5x minus 6 times 4x squared plus 5x plus 1. Now the last step says factor again if possible and or solve if it's an equation. Now clearly this is not an equation. There's no equal sign, guys, so I want to make sure we don't actually solve. We just actually have to factor again. So again, I'm going to say, ma'am, multiply, add, multiply, multiply, add, multiply, and I have to refactor these. So I know this one's a little uglier because of the fours. Um, so remember, it could be four and one, or two and two. So this is just that guess and check, and it's just trial and error. You just got to try it till it works. Um, I'm going to start with four and one. I don't know if that's going to work, but I'm going to start with it. And again, this could be six and one or two and three. And because this is a negative, remember, I know my signs need to be different. So let's see. I'm going to try maybe a three here and a two here. I know my signs need to be different. So I'm going to go plus minus. And how do I check, remember? Well, I just make my two smiley faces. Say, okay, that's a negative 3x, and that's 8x. And I would say that totals a positive 5x, so wow, I got it on the first try. Um, let's see if we get as lucky on the next one. I'm going to try 4 and 1 again and see how that works. And, oh, this one's really nice because my only options are 1 and 1. And I'm going to draw my smiley faces. Okay, so that's a 1x and a 4x, which makes... Oh, lucky again, 5x, if that's a positive and a positive. So it looks like it's a mess here, but I just want to be clear on what my final answers are. Because it did not say solve, it's not an equation, my final factored answer should look like this. 
Okay. And again, it just said factor completely. And none of these terms can get factored further, so I know I've done it completely. All right, let's go ahead and try another one. Now, notice the directions are slightly different. It does say solve. Okay, so let's make a note. That means your answer has to say x equals. Okay, you actually have to solve this equation. So, again, because there's like this junk and it's not just x squared there, I'm going to do a u sub. So I'm going to say u equals x squared minus 9. And the reason we do that is because this is an easier equation to solve. I can solve u squared minus 2u minus 35 equals 0 pretty darn fast. So again, I'm saying ma'am, multiply, add, multiply. So I know I've got u and u. And let's see, I'm going 7 and 5, and I know my signs are different, and I need a negative 2. So hopefully you're saying negative 7, oops, that should be a 5, uh, plus 5. Okay, equals 0. Now remember, you're not done because the equation wasn't that simple. Uh, we have to substitute that u back in. So now I've got x squared minus 9 minus 7, and x squared minus 9 plus 5 equals 0. And this can get cleaned up nicely because I've got like terms sitting here. I actually get x squared minus 16 and x squared minus 4. Now remember, these are perfect squares, difference of two perfect squares, and it has to be a difference in order to get factored. So this can actually get factored to x plus 4 and x minus 4, and x plus 2 and x minus 2. And now because it said solve, I'm going to tee it up between each factor. And remember, you're setting each piece equal to 0. So I get x equals negative 4, x equals 4, x equals negative 2, and x equals positive 2. Now, you'll notice the directions did say go ahead and verify this graphically. All right, so let's pause it and get our calculator, and we're going to get this sketched out in our notebook. So when we say solve graphically, we're literally saying type this in y equals. Okay, get it typed in your calculator. Okay, and of course, we're always going to start on Zoom 6. That's our standard 10 by 10 window. Now, what are you going to see? Hopefully, your calculator shows you something like this. Okay, and again, our goal is just to verify when this equals 0. And I can look here. I've got, uh, now it's not the most beautiful picture, but I've got a negative 4, a positive 4, a negative 2, and a positive 2. And I basically said, okay, let's play with that window a little bit and make it look a little nicer. And I think you can clearly see um, that this function, notice a couple things about it. It's even because it's symmetric to the y-axis. Okay, it's an even function. And it's also even degree because notice the end behavior. It goes to positive infinity in both directions. Okay, but again, I'm just verifying when this function equals zero. Okay, our next type of advanced factoring is factoring polynomials containing six terms. And this is using the grouping method. So here's the deal. Sometimes the method of factoring by grouping works with polynomials containing six terms. To factor this type, you can try to split it several different ways. You can try into three groups of two, or if that doesn't work, into two groups of three. Okay, so again, it's just a trial and error thing. You just have to see what works. So because there's six terms, I'm actually going to try going into three groups of two. And I'm going to see if I can do a grouping method where I pull out a GCF. Now again, this is factor. You're not solving. We're just factoring completely. So if I take a look at the first two terms, it looks like they have an x to the fourth in common. So I'm going to pull that out. And I'm dividing, so I'm going to be left with a 2x plus, if you start with two terms, you have to have two terms here. So I'm going to say that's 2x plus 1. And a quick check. Distribute this through and make sure it matches up exactly. x to the 4th times 2x is 2x to the 5th plus x to the 4th. Okay, now group the next two terms. Now, it looks like they have an x squared in common, but I could pull out a positive or a negative. And the reason I'm going to pull out a negative x squared is when I divide, remember, in grouping, you want it to be the exact same. So if I take a negative 2x cubed and divide a negative x squared, I get a positive 2x. If I take a negative x squared and divide a negative x squared, I get a positive 1. Take the two seconds and verify you did it correctly. Distribute this back through and check. 
we don't want to lose a lot of points on this exam because we're making silly negative mistakes. So that would be a negative 2x cubed and a negative x squared. It checks. And that was painless. Now go to the last set. I, it looks like I can pull out a 2, but do I want a positive 2 or a negative 2? Well, again, I'm going to try a negative 2. Negative 4x divided by negative 2 is positive 2x. Negative 2 divided by negative 2 is positive 1. And why is that so important? Again, we have to have the same terms there. Let's underline them. Those have to be the same. Now we're going to do what we do in grouping, is we're going to pull out the GCF. Basically, from this term, this term, and this term, I'm pulling out 2x plus 1. Okay, so let's literally cross it off. We took out 2x plus 1, 2x plus 1, and 2x plus 1. We pulled it out as a GCF. So now what's left? And I'm going to use a bracket to show what's left. x to the fourth minus x squared minus 2. Now are we done? Well, that's where that word completely sneaks up on you. Can anybody still get factored? Okay, so I have 2x plus 1 times, I bet this bear can. So remember, ma'am, multiply, add, multiply. Now don't let x to the fourth scare you. What times what is x to the fourth? Well, of course your options are x cubed and x to the first, or x squared and x squared. But common sense tells you you have to add to an x squared, so you obviously need the x squared terms. So I'm going to go x squared and x squared. Uh, 2 is lovely because your only options are 2 and 1. And the signs have to be different. So I'm going to go minus 2 plus 1. Now one more quick check. Can anybody else still get factored? Well, your eye might be drawn to this term. You might be thinking x plus 1, x minus 1. But hold up. Remember, it has to be a difference of two perfect squares. And this is a plus sign. So I want to be clear, this is as factored as it can go. Okay, so let's put a little FC here. This is factored completely. Now maybe you want to argue with me, and maybe you want to say, well, wait a minute, I, bet, I thought that could be factored with imaginary numbers. And you're right. If I wanted to go further, this actually could be factored to x plus 1i and x minus 1i. So we just have to make sure we're dealing with real numbers versus imaginary numbers. Okay, in this next example, again, we're asked to factor completely, not to solve. So don't let this say x equals at the end. So again, I'm going to group my first two terms, my next two terms, and my next two, and see if I can find those GCFs. Well, in the first term, it looks like I can pull out an x squared, and I'd be left with 2x plus 3. In the second term, I can pull out, oh, it looks like just an x. Now remember, it can be positive or negative. Um, I'm going to pull out a negative x. And I am left with 5 minus 8xy. Okay, that's odd. Did you see why I sounded hesitant? If we did it correctly, let's underline. This guy and this guy need to be the same. Put that in your notebook. We know those have to be the same. And are they? Okay, so don't erase. I want you to put a big X through this. This did not work. Now think back to what we put in our notes there. We said you could either factor into groups of 2 or groups of 3. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to, instead of doing 2, 2, and 2, we're going to go these 3, and we're going to do these 3, and factor those, and try that with grouping. So let's take the first group here. And of course, it's guess and check. Or actually, it's GCF first. It looks like they have a GCF of x. So I'm going to pull out an x, and I'm going to say I'm left with 2x squared plus 3x minus 5. Okay, let's keep our fingers crossed we get the same thing on the next one. In this group, I obviously can pull out a y, and it looks like they're all divisible by 4 as well. Now, do you want to pull out a positive or a negative? And that's the most important part, is that you put a sign there. Let's pull out a positive 4y. So then, let's see, 8 divided by 4 is 2x squared. Well, that's a good start. Plus, let's make that a 3x, yay, minus Five. And why am I saying yay? Well, I know I did it right if these quantities are the exact same. All right, so now let's pull out our big GCF of 2x squared plus 3x minus 5. And again, feel free to cross them off. You pulled those out. They're gone. What's left? Well, in this term, there's an x left. And in this term, there's a plus 4y. Now, 
Don't get tricked if that's a multiple choice because the direction said factor completely. And this is not factored completely because, again, it looks like there's a MAM operation. Multiply, add, multiply. So you might be annoyed with the multiply, add, multiply on the guess and check, but this one's really nice because your only options for 2 are 2 and 1, and your only options for 5 are 5 and 1. So I just want to make my smiley faces to check to make sure I get a total of 3 in the middle. So let's see, I think I'm going to go with a 5 here and a 1 here. Let's check. That's a 5x and a 2x, which would give me a 3x. Perfect. So that would make this a positive 5 and a minus 1. This bear here, nothing to pull out, no GCF, nothing fancy, so just times x plus 4y. So again, I just want to be very clear what my factors are. I have 2x plus 5 times x minus 1 times x plus 4y. And it didn't say solve, so please, please make sure you don't solve unless it asks you to. Well, that does it for our advanced factoring, and like we said, expect a quiz on that tomorrow. Um, if you have any questions, you know where to find us. Good luck.